got another video here of the Grizzly. Um, I was tired of having all my accessories tied back to the battery and then having a million and one wires back there. So I did something and I did it right. First is I bought the little adapter plug that comes off of the cigarette lighter, gives you two outlets here for power. That 12 volt DC power goes in and fires a Bosch relay, 30 amp relay, and then that bridges power directly from the battery to source to this fuse block. Um, that is the fuse block that I put in, so no more unfused connections at the battery. Everything is laid out. It's all on a separate fuse. It comes here. These are your positives and your positive input, your negative input, and then these are negative terminals here as well. So everything is grounded and fed with voltage from here. There is a cover that goes over that. Uh, raises the hood up a little bit, but it won't be a problem because I can still get it fastened down relatively well. Uh, the problem is I have the cheap Harbor Freight winch. It works for me, so don't laugh but it comes with this huge, huge brick that just takes all the space up that I have under the hood here. So that's the hood. The next step that I took is, I hear that these systems are really prone to blowing the dash on them because of power surges, things like that. So what I did is I, I got a new die hard battery this summer and I had this uh, POS LED or Lee LED lithium battery my Harley Davidson if anybody knows me they know I hate this thing uh, I wanted to blow it up to be quite honest it would bring me so much joy because this battery it has 800 plus 900 plus cold cranking amps for three quarters to a second well Harley can't get past that comp compression stroke and you need that grinding power what I'm going to call torque to get it past that and this battery just didn't have it um, that is not the cheapest battery out there if anybody wants to challenge that uh, so it's not like I got a Chinese knockoff brand or something to that regard there. Um, there is a battery isolator in here as well. It will uh, come on when it's 13.3 volts. When it senses the battery is charging, it will recharge that Lee LED uh, lithium battery. When it is 12 volts, 12.8 volts, it will disconnect that battery. So as you can see, I now have battery terminals, my little charger pigtail, and then wires going back to that isolator and to the second battery. I no longer have a ton of cables underneath here. So what that's doing is now all of my accessories from that fuse panel I showed you comes off of this secondary battery and it acts like a huge capacitor if anybody knows how lithium batteries work and all that. And it will take a hit when I drive the winch or I'm powering the winch at a high, high pooling and it won't hit the sensitivity of the battery system, the charging system. So I will end up putting a board here, a piece of rubber down there. This thing doesn't get hot, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, it can sit any direction at all because it's non-spillable uh, since it's completely sealed on the inside. It is a smart battery, so it will not allow shorts. It will not allow uh, overcharging, discharging heat, things like that. It will shut down if it gets too hot and it'll shut down for about 20 minutes to a half hour. That was the problem with the Harley. I could not have that happen when I'm out on a ride staging, getting ready to go and the darn battery shuts down um, because it couldn't get past the compression stroke. So that's the system there. Again, I will be able to reutilize this because really the battery just comes to that hump there. If anybody's familiar with humps and it goes back down, that battery sits into that well. So I'll still be able to use this for a really good space for other things like rain suits and some small things. I got plenty of storage on this bike, so I'm not worried about that. One other thing that I've done here, um, heated seat, move that out of the way, is you're going to see this is a terminal here off the ground, and I can unscrew this blue knob, and that will shut the battery down completely. It will disconnect the main battery from the bike. And the reason I do that this bike primarily sits at my property out in Kentucky that is out in the boonies with no electric. It is off the grid and I can disconnect the battery on this and not have the bike discharge any part of the system at all uh, while I'm away. Now what's important is this wire is coming off the main lead of the battery because this again this is my pigtail. I can disconnect the battery through this disconnect that blue knob. I have a solar panel out there basically a solar panel uh, battery tender I plug this bike into and so that's what keeps the battery topped off and again by being able to disconnect it physically 
I don't have to worry about anything causing a phantom drain or anything like that. Now that screwdriver's back there, that's just to hold those cables down so you guys can see that. Um, but that's the bike, that's the system I did. So again, all the accessories are now powered off of the um, key switch and it's got an interposing relay so that way I'm not running all the power off that key switch cigarette lighter uh, onto this and trying to power stuff. That's not the way to do it. You'll catch your bike on fire, you'll short the system out and do things like that. So I'm going to get this thing wrapped up. Uh, as a whole, the bike's got a few accessories. It's got a little tiny radio up there because I'm not there to let everybody enjoy my music. I just want a little background music when I'm on the property. A light on the handlebar that turns when I turn. Got a LED bar there. Uh, those have been converted over to LED as well. And then I have fender well lights because I do ride at night. And when you're out there by Red River Gorge, it could mean, it could mean the, light, the difference of life and death whether I know where those tires are at on ledges. Um, the other cool thing I put on this bike I did last year was there is a full-fledged reverse light. That was a little tricky. Uh, took some relay magic and some diodes, but I got it working where it doesn't throw the reverse light flashing. Uh, but that comes on when you throw it in reverse, that light comes on and lights the area up. A little LED light bar, I think a four inch there. Um, other thing that I've done to this bike is there is a gusset plate that I bought from Turner. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. There it is on top. Uh, but I also put another brace on it and then created my own brace. There's a Harbor Freight uh, little receiver there. And then I added some supports there so that way I can pull a lot of weight with this bike and not have a problem. So that's my rig. But the most important thing I wanted to show everybody was the secondary battery with an isolation relay so your accessories cannot drain the main battery. I will never be stuck without getting it started again. Uh, that could be, I mean, uh, the difference between life and death when you're out in uh, cold climates, ice fishing, things like that. I know a lot of the people use these bikes for that. So um, any questions, comments, feel free to ask. I answer anything that I can.